This is the first lecture video for section 2.6 on impossibility and alternative ballots. In this lecture, we'll be talking about something called Arrow's theorem. For the last several lectures, we've been talking about different methods for finding the winner of an election. And what we found is that so far, all of them seem flawed in some way. So which of these methods should we use? Well, we could say maybe we shouldn't use any of them and keep searching for a better way. Unfortunately, this search is going to be in vain because there's something called Arrow's theorem that was proved back in 1951 that there is no voting system that satisfies all of the following conditions. So there's a list of five conditions, and we can't have all five of these. That's what Arrow's theorem says. So the five conditions are that the election method always gives a winner, except for ties, is not a dictatorship. In other words, there's not just one voter that decides the outcome of the election has the independence of a relevant alternatives condition, or in other words, there are no spoilers that doesn't suffer from the spoiler effect. It satisfies the Pareto condition. Now remember what that means is that if all of the voters prefer one candidate over another candidate, then the other candidate should not be the winner. And then also has voters ranking their candidates in some order. So let's compare Arrow's theorem to May's theorem, which we studied in a previous lecture. May's theorem told us that when we have exactly two candidates, there is one and only one system, namely majority rule, that satisfies certain fairness conditions. But Arrow's theorem says, the, with the list of fairness conditions that we talked about on the previous slide, there is no system, not even one system, that satisfies all of those conditions. So we can't have everything. We can't have all five of these conditions. So what should we give up? If we have to give up something, let's go through the list and think about what would be the one of these five conditions that we could live without. So in the first one, always giving a winner except for ties, that's pretty important. We talked about when we talked about the Condorcet method, which is a method that doesn't always give a winner, how disruptive that would be if you had an election and you counted all the votes and you figured everything out and there just wasn't a winner. There just wasn't a candidate that won the election. So I don't think we can give up that one. Not being a dictatorship, I think, you know, it's as folks who you know, like voting and like elections and, and like the, the voice that that gives us, we don't want to live in a dictatorship. So I think that's pretty important too. Independence of irrelevant alternatives, or in other words, no spoiler effect, maybe we could live without that one. But again, people seem to get pretty upset when there are spoiler candidates. And so maybe that's something that we want to keep. Satisfying the Pareto condition. Again, the Pareto condition says that if every single voter likes candidate A more than candidate B, then candidate B shouldn't win. And again, that seems pretty intuitive. That seems like something that you would want to have. And let's not sleep on this last one. Voters ranking their candidates in order. Maybe that is something that we can give up. Maybe there's another way that we can cast our votes and express some kind of preference, but not actually do it by ranking the candidates in order. So the way that we're going to do that is by thinking about the different kinds of ballots that we could use, some of which we've already talked about and some of which are going to be a little bit new. So we're going to have four types of ballots. A single vote ballot is where voters choose a single candidate. That's going to seem pretty familiar. A rank ballot is where voters rank the candidates from best to worst. That's something we've been talking about a lot over the last several lectures. And then a couple of new kinds of ballots. An approval ballot is where voters can choose multiple candidates to cast votes for. And a range ballot is where voters rate each candidate on a scale. So we're going to take a look at each of these in detail. So if you've ever voted before, a single vote ballot is probably the kind of ballot that you're familiar with. There's a list of candidates and you put a mark next to the candidate that you want to cast your single vote for. But many of the methods that we've talked about, Condorcet method, rank methods, runoff methods, and so on, are impossible with this ballot type. We would need to know the full preference order, and all we know from this ballot is that this voter likes A the best. We don't have any idea how they feel about B, C, and D. So instead, what we've been talking about for the last several lectures require rank ballots. So you put a numbering to the candidates in order from your favorite candidate, which in this case would be indicated with the number one, and then your next candidate two, third candidate three, fourth candidate four. So this is just another way of representing the preference order, B first, C second, A third, and D fourth. Every candidate must be ranked and ties are not allowed. But here's a new kind of ballot. So a generalization of the single vote ballot is where you can put a mark next to any candidate that you approve of. So in this case, this voter likes A, B, and D. Now, do, does this voter like those candidates equally? We don't know that, but the voter has made the decision that those are the three candidates that they approve of and that the candidate C is one that they disapprove of. And this allows voters to vote for minor party candidates and major party candidates at the same time. 
Another type of ballot we could use is a range ballot, where instead of putting a mark next to each candidate, we put a number on a scale. In this case, an example would be a scale of one to five. If think of it as a, a rating a restaurant uh, on one star to five stars. So candidate A gets three stars, candidate B gets five stars, two stars, and two stars. So it's a way of rating each candidate, and you're allowed to have ties. And in this example, the scale could be really anything. So I've used a scale from one to five, but it could be one to 10, zero, zero or one, flip a coin kind of thing. So there are a lot of different ways that you could have your scale be set up on the range voting ballot. So next time what we're gonna talk about are these two new kinds of ballots and how we would use them to actually figure out the winner of the election.